from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Uzma Jafri and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Set amidst the premises of the majestic Raja Rani Temple in Bhubaneswar, the Raja Rani Music Festival is one of the most well-known Indian classical music festivals in the country. Recently, the third edition of the festival was held in its full glory, which witnessed a spate of melodious musical numbers. Take a look. Bhubaneswar is a city full of culture. Be it architecture, dance and music, handicrafts or art, Bhubaneswar has always been a hub of all kinds of art and cultural events. Out of a plethora of art and cultural festivals organized in the city, the Raja Rani festival holds a special place. Recently, famed musicians of national and international repute performed a symphony of entrancing Indian classical music at the 19th edition of the festival. The three-day annual festival is organized in the magnificent Rajarani temple premises which dates back to the 11th century AD. Rajarani Music Festival is one of the premier uh, musical shows in the country which has been performed uh, since like, uh, 2003 and uh, music lovers all over the country look for this occasion uh, and also uh, nationally and globally it is acclaimed uh, as a uh, music festival and uh, since uh, it is operating, uh, it is working since uh, 2003, very senior artists all over the country, they have already participated in this uh, show and uh, it has a importance of its own. The festival serves as a showcase for classical Indian music, including vocal styles such as Hindustani, Carnatic and Odissi, which are native to the state of Odisha, as well as sonorous instruments that are only found in India. Out of all the performances, the performance by maestro Jabahar Mishra, who performed Hindustani flute, and Vidushi Ashwini Bhide Desh Pandey's act, a well-regarded Hindustani vocalist, received the loudest cheers. Our Shastri Sangeet is also something that has been going on for 2000 years. मैं ये नहीं कहूँगी कि 11th century, 12th century का है, लेकिन और ख्याल पिछले कम से कम चार पांच सौ सालों से हम लोग गा रहे हैं। मैंने जो आज अभंग गाया, वो संत ज्ञानेश्वर का था, वो भी 12th century के पोएट थे। और मेरे महाराष्ट्र में ये परंपरा भी है कि संत कवियों के गीत गाए जाते हैं आज 800 साल से ये परंपरा 12 ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी से चलती आ रही है और मैं खुद को बहुत सौभाग्यशाली मानती हूँ कि इससे जुड़ने का मुझे मौका मिलता है the artists captivated the viewers with their classical melodies and beautiful performances as they taped their feet to the strokes of the accompanying musical instruments. Many dignitaries graced the occasion making it a successful event. Audiences from not only India but also from other parts of the world who have a passion for music came to see these mystical performances. It's the first time I'm here in Rajarani Festival and really enjoying the artists, the quality of the music that we have the opportunity to witness today is amazing. The entire setup, it's amazing, it's a different mood and the temple uh, at night, it has like a mystic feeling. The Rajrani festival is one among a number of successful steps taken by the government of Odisha to attract tourism to the state and spread awareness about its culture and heritage at various national and international platforms.
Situated in the Nizamuddin West area of New Delhi, the Darga of Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia is one of the most revered sites in the country. Also known for its evening Kavali sessions, the shrine is visited by thousands of pilgrims every week. Recently, the 719th Ors of the Saint was held, which was attended by people of all religious communities. Decorated with glittering lights and echoing with magic and mysticism, the Darka of Hazrat Nizamuddin in New Delhi recently commemorated the 719th Ors of the Holy Saint. The shrine is famous as Mehboob e Ilahi among devotees. Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia is the most famous saint of the Chishti order. The four day event saw a sea of devotees of different backgrounds and religions visiting the shrine to seek the blessings of the saint. <laughs> इसके अंदर हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई विदाउट कास्ट एंड क्रीड यहां पर आते हैं दरगाहों में और यहां पर अपनी मुरादें पूरी करके जाते हैं ख्वाजा मोइनुद्दीन चिश्ती अजमेर वाले नंबर 1 हैं उनके बाद ख्वाजा कुतुबुद्दीन बख्तियार काकी मेहरौली में उनका दरबार है वो दूसरे नंबर पे आते हैं तीसरे नंबर पे हजरत बाबा फरीदुद्दीन गंज शकर आते हैं जिनका मजार पाक पटन के अंदर है पाकिस्तान में चौथे नंबर पे उनके जो खलीफा हुए हैं वो हजरत ख्वाजा सैयद मोहम्मद निजामुद्दीन औलिया जरे दरबख्श महबूब इलाही इट इज बिलीव दैट निजामुद्दीन औलिया वाज बोर्न इन बदायूं सिटी ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश एंड वाज रीलोकेटेड टू दिल्ली विद हिज मदर ऑन द डेथ ऑफ हिज फादर बिल्ड इन इस्लामिक स्टाइल आर्किटेक्चर निजामुद्दीन दरगाह इज अ ब्यूटीफुल स्ट्रक्चर comprising integrated lattice screens and a vast courtyard framed by marble arches dating back to the 14th century besides housing the tomb of the saint the dargah also has the tomb of amir khusro one of the greatest urdu and persian poets well recognized for seeking truth love and knowledge through a more personal experience with a greater being Nizamuddin Aulia is respected by the people of all communities. Ye darbar wo darbar hai jahan jahan se Ganga Jamuna Tehzeeb shuru hui hai. Har mazhab aur millat ke log yahan par aate hain aur tamam mazhabon ke liye yahan par duaein hoti hain. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai sab ke liye duaein hoti hain. Sab log ek platform pe rahe. Yahan tak ki yahan jo main bhandara hota hai wo bhi vegetarian bhandara hota hai bagar lassan aur pyaas ka. और हर मजहब के लोगों के लिए यहाँ दुआएं होती हैं और हजरत निज़ामुद्दीन अलिया के दरबार में सब लोग एक ही प्लेटफॉर्म पे बैठ के लंगर खाया करते थे चाहे वो हिंदू हो मुस्लिम हो सिख हो ईसाई हो गंगा जमुना तहजीब जो शुरू हुई है इसी दरबार से शुरू हुई है और यहाँ पर जो आज मेन दिन था मेन दुआएँ हुई हैं तो सब मजहब मिलत के लोग दुआएँ हुई हैं सब एक यूनिटी सब एक यूनिटी बना के रहें सब मोहब्बत से रहें हिंदू मुस्लिम भाईचारा पूरी दुनिया में फैले इसी के लिए यहाँ खास दुआएँ हुई हैं These holy celebrations like Urs clearly indicate that the lesson of humanity and compassion that was once propagated by the Sufi saints is still having its roots deeply embedded in the Indian culture. Now a round up of some of the major stories that made news recently. Animal lovers came together to celebrate the love for their four-legged friends as they visited a pet show organized by India's Western Pune city. Around 2500 dogs and 300 cats along with their owners participated in different activities held during the pet gala event including a fashion show and cat show. Uh, we have dogs and cats. Uh, we also have adoption uh, happening here at a big level. Uh, for dogs it's a get together. where people will come around there will be activities across the day okay there is an agility zone where you can touch the know the intelligence and obedience of your dog it's also great to uh, you know have a bond with your dog then we have activities happening on the stage we are making sure that you know the sound levels and the decibel level are maintained so that you know our dogs are uh, patient and they uh, they don't get uh, um, a problem with the uh, sound and also we are having a championship cat show Wearing colorful collars, different breeds of dogs, including cocker spaniel, 
Beagle and Labrador were among others who flaunted their catwalk skills as they walked with their owners. Visitors, which included children, were excited to attend the pet show and spend quality time with dogs and the cats. An Indian non-profit organization in eastern Siliguri town held 50 special able children celebrate Children's Day with a ride on a heritage toy train. India celebrates Children's Day to mark the birth anniversary of the country's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru as he was fond of children who affectionately called him Chacha or Uncle Nehru. Toyton is a heritage of this upulaks pe jo physical handicap bachche log jo jisko mauka nahi milta hai unko lekar ke aaj hum siliguri junction se rongtang ka safar kiya ho at least 50 specially able children were seen singing and cheering along the fun ride the darjeeling toy train first ran in 1881 when sir ashley aden was the lieutenant governor of bengal the trains were declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1999. India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of the saints inform the lives of people and this was very well reflected at the shrine of Saint Hazrat Khwaja Dana Sahib where people of all faiths assembled to seek the blessings of the Holy Saint. Examples of peaceful coexistence and religious harmony could be seen in different nooks and corners of the country. One such example is that of the shrine of Khwaja Dana in Surat city of Gujarat which has been uniting people of all religions for years. It has served as a sinashore of communal harmony for generations, which is thronged by a large number of activities, regardless of their caste and religion. यहाँ पे अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह सरकार के बारगाह में सभी धर्म के लोग आते हैं हिंदू आते हैं मुसलमान आते हैं सिख आते हैं साई आते हैं सरकार की जिस जिसको मोहब्बत हो तमाम ही आते हैं इसके अंदर बेदबाव नहीं है चाहे मुसलमानी आए या खाली हिंदू आए ऐसा कुछ नहीं है हर धर्म का लोग आता है हमारे बारगाह में रिगार्डेड एज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट सूफी सेंट्स ख्वाजा दाना साहिब थ्रू आउट हिज लाइफ प्रोपगेटेड द मैसेज ऑफ पीस एंड ब्रदरहुड the shrine is believed to be 425 years old. Devotees also believe that Saint Dana Sahib protects Surat city from all kinds of evil eye. It is believed that Saint fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty handed from here. फिर मेरे बच्चे भी आते हैं उनको भी बहुत अच्छा लगता है उनकी भी ऐसे मनोकामना पूरी हुई है मेरी भी मनोकामना पूरी हुई है बहुत श्रद्धा से आती हूँ यहाँ पे सब धर्म के आते हैं आने वाले तो सब धर्म के आते हैं मैं भी हिंदू धर्म से हूँ तो मैं भी बहुत ऐसे मानती हूँ इनको मेरे फैमिली वाले भी ऐसे ज़्यादा मानते हैं इनको थोड़ा अच्छा लगता है सिंस एजेस दी सूफी सेंट्स लाइक सेंट ख्वाजा दाना साहिब has propagated the message of spiritualism and harmony in our country and their teachings are still playing a significant role in strengthening the threat of secularism. And now we will have a look at India's digital journey and how the introduction of schemes like direct benefit transfer and Aadhaar are revolutionizing the digital scenario of the country. Digital India is a force to be reckoned with. Whether it is through the efficient transfer of funds at the individual level or the massive distribution of government assistance to the most vulnerable, Digital India has virtually revolutionized many aspects of society. The global financial body, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank both heaped praise on India's direct benefit scheme which has been a seamless, transparent digital medium that has supported society's most economically disadvantaged, especially during trying times in the face of the pandemic. 
India's Direct Benefit Scheme is being recognized as a model for other emerging economies for more effective targeting of beneficiaries of subsidy programs. How has India, a country with such a vast population, able to digitize so efficiently and successfully? In 2009, the National Payments Corporation of India took over the ATM network in order to modernize retail payments and settlements. This milestone was followed by the biggest technological breakthrough in India's digital journey, the establishment of the Unique Identification Authority of India, or UIDAI. India had previously faced many challenges with a significant portion of the population lacking any legitimate identification. The UIDAI created a biometric database of its population based on a 12-digit digital identity known as ADAR, verified by fingerprints and retina scans. Right now our banking, our Aadhaar, our India's stack technology on the digital public goods is at the cutting edge. It is the best in the world. Um, transferring money from one account to another has never been so easy anywhere else in the world. Um, including in China, including in the United States, across political systems. Um, for example, last month we did about, uh, if I'm not wrong, more than 7 billion transactions on UPI. And it is almost doubling year on year. So soon we'll hit 100 billion transactions per year kind of run rate. Uh, these are unimagined numbers still even a few years ago. By 2022, over a billion ADAR authentications were done by UIDAI. In 2021, UIDAI had claimed to have completed ADAR identification of 99% of Indian adults, a massive feat considering India is home to nearly 17% of the world's population. With the ADAR program in place, the government was able to implement the ambitious financial development policy, Pradhan Mantri John Don Yojana, with an aim to provide all households in India with a bank account. In just one year, 166 million people had opened accounts as part of the program. Prior to the successful implementation of both programs, many millions of Indians were unable to open a bank account as they did not possess any ID. The Adar card solved that. Now, government payments could be paid directly into bank accounts, and beneficiaries had easy access to their money via debit cards or smartphones. Both these programs demonstrated the remarkable acceleration of conventional financial development in the country. These groundbreaking developments fall under the umbrella of a unique cyber India stack system the ambitious creation of a digital infrastructure to resolve issues in many areas, including governance, businesses, startups, and many more. The key components of this digital infrastructure involve a consensual agreement to develop presenceless, paperless, and cashless layers. India's digitization of data enabled the country to fight the COVID pandemic without chaos from contact tracing to organizing and implementing the vaccine drive. We have a financial digital stack, we have a health digital stack. And I think one of the most impressive digital stacks that we actually developed during COVID was the digital database that we developed for both vaccination and RT-PCR testing. So I think all this actually helped us to manage the pandemic very efficiently. The availability and access to bank accounts made it possible for the impoverished to receive aid efficiently and effectively, and also enabled individuals and businesses to conduct transactions without the need for in-person interactions. Because of these advances, Indians across the country, whether in the informal or formal economy, can safely transfer funds anywhere with just a few taps on their mobile phones. The acceleration of digital payments, facilitated by the creation of this unique Digital India stack, have been key drivers of the economic development in India, helping stabilize incomes in rural areas and boost sales in the informal sector. India leads all other countries in terms of daily digital payment volume. 
Having become the trendsetter in many of the digital domains, India is expected to propose the creation of a robust digital architecture when it assumes the G20 presidency. The digital arm of Brand India is poised for rapid expansion, increased investment, and increasing respect and admiration on a global scale. And in the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. London's Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew debuted its decade-long annual festive lights show ahead of its public opening. With over a million lights along a 2.7-kilometer trail, this year's attraction showcases new installations of suspended illumination and optical illusion. This is our 10th birthday year, so we're very excited to be presenting a brand new show this year. We have 22 amazing artistic installations um, around a 2.7 kilometer trail. Among the attractions were animated projections, a light display shaped like a Christmas tree, and an impressive light, water, and pyrotechnic display in front of the garden's palm house. This year's show comes as much of Europe faced an energy crisis brought by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. When asked how Kew Gardens has responded to the crisis, Basra said, the show uses 40% less energy through a mix of using biodiesel fuel and LED lights. Rinai had introduced a new logistics center in Kasugai city, Aichi prefecture. It controls the logistics of Rinai products such as laundry dryers, hot water heaters and so on. They are produced in factories. In order to meet the needs, Rinai established a stable supply chain and digitized a modern logistics center. It is worker friendly and compensates for human labor shortages with a large number of robots.大型化改革というこ Rinai's efforts to make progress of DX in logistics have proven effective in reducing transportation costs and human labor power. It will reduce the cost of Rinai's products and keep customers around the world happy. Yokohama City is enthusiastically promoting decarbonization and advocating zero carbon Yokohama. Uglina is the main constituent of Yokohama City Biofuel Organization. It established a promotional plant to produce biojet fuel and biofuel for diesel engines from algae and abolish the use of cooking oil. Uglina has already made abroad overseas developments. It will contribute to global decarbonization.原料ですね。あの、使用済みのテンプラブレスとか、あとは緑虫から抽出された油脂。それを原料といたしまして、えっと、ジェット燃料とあとはえっと軽油、ディーゼル燃料を作ってます。と四つの工程それぞれですけども
its administrative activity to direct future industry will affect other local governments and the Japanese government. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Uzma and it's goodbye from the entire production team. <laughs>